I worked in corporate for roughly 20 years in the power tool industry. I left corporate after building too many things for too many other people and decided I wanted my own business that I could build for myself and my family. There is a lot of joy involved in actually making, actually having my hands in the process. I thought hard about having a, a much bigger company and paying people to do all the work for me, but I enjoy it too much to let it go. As some of you know, part of what I aim to do with my YouTube channel is to showcase other makers, their workshops, and their businesses to offer a glimpse of what daily life is like for those of us who feel compelled to work with our hands. I would like to introduce you to my friend Michael Williams, the man behind the aprons. If you haven't seen them yet, you are going to love them. Michael is just outside of Charleston, South Carolina, about 20 minutes away from my studio. We're just doing a little shop tour today. He's gonna to tell us a little bit about his processes and what he's got going on here. We'll pick his brain about a few other things as well. Yep, right on. Glad to have y'all here. <laughs> All right, so let's let's walk through it. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um, so we make leather aprons. I started the company maybe, I guess, five years ago or so. But, so yeah, I, I worked for uh, some of the, the major tool companies and my longest tenure was with Festool. Uh, had a great time there, but after a long time working for other people and building something for others, you know, I uh, decided to leave and go do my thing. I had always known that I, I needed to have my own company. Uh, I wasn't exactly sure what that was going to be. Hmm. I didn't know the first thing about leatherworking. I didn't know how to sew. I didn't know any of this at all. Uh, but I had some, uh, I engaged with a, a couple of companies early on, uh, a big leather tool belt company out in California, mm -hmm. and really got an understanding of the process and not just the process, but the, the quality of the goods right. of what they were producing. And they were making these leather tool belts. And I, I was just blown away. So that, like the kind of belt you'd have like, have your hammer in and all that absolutely. other kind of stuff? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And so they were making these super high-end leather tool belts. And I, I thought, how is it that the, the rough carpenter, the, the framer, wearing basically a Louis Vuitton level tool belt mm -hmm. around their waist, but a woodworker or a carpenter in the shop is wearing some canvas piece of junk, you know, right. that's gonna wear through uh, in a matter of a year. You right. know? And uh, so that was really the, the start of the company. The Very start cool. Of the product. Yeah. Fascinating. So from corporate to leather aprons, making this transition, and that was how many years ago again? I think I left Festool in 2015. Uh -huh. So yeah, thereabouts. So I, I spent a year uh, designing and developing the product. Uh, worked with a, another buddy of mine, Ben Rittering, out in California, who helped me design the, the original. He's just amazing woodworker out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, then spent a year, year and a half, just making sure that I had the design right. I think I, I made a hundred of them before I sold a single one, just because right. it had to be right out of the gate. And so anyway, finally, when I was, I was happy with it, uh, you know, put them on the market, put up the website, uh, brought on some dealers, and I've, I've kind of moved away from the dealer model at this point because yeah. I, I get so much more out of the customer engagement yeah. and so much of what we do is and custom. And they get so much more out of it. Yeah, exactly. The, right. the customer wants the experience of buying it from us. And so much of it is so custom mm -hmm. at this point that it makes sense to, to engage directly right. with the, the customer. So anyways, we have the, the website and a lot of our marketing is really just viral I say viral. It's word of mouth and right. social media and mm -hmm. things like this. Um, we do very little advertising, and I can tell you, I am here at the shop till 11 o'clock or midnight every night, trying to put together orders. You know, making whatever. I know comes how in that there. is. Yeah, you right? know exactly how that is. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it is just nonstop. Uh, you and I were talking a little earlier about this whole COVID thing, and I was really nervous about the business. Yeah. Like, was there going to be a business in six months? And 
I've been blown away. Like our business has doubled mm -hmm. this year just in the, the aprons. And that's before we even get to the this face mask. It's been absolutely pure crazy. I thought right. the summer was gonna be slow. I know. Full throttle. So. Yeah, it's amazing. I think that um, at least from what I've seen, you know, with the with the tool sales and the engagement and everything like that, I think that the more that, you know, people are are sitting at home and like they're reevaluating their lives, right. like we were talking about. Yeah. And you know, they're trying to assess, wait, what do I do that I that I really enjoy and why am I doing it? So I think there are so many people who are exploring woodworking as a hobby or people that have like had it at a ho as a hobby that are just diving in deeper now. Yeah. That are getting more into it. And I think that that's where we're kind of seeing this little boom, you know? Yeah, I, I could not agree more. And I think another aspect of this that can't be overstated is the the makers movement in right. general yeah. and i i guess i timed it just right when i left corporate is you know obviously social media had had become uh, just a huge moving force in the industry but as as more and more people got into it and could see what others were doing and then build off of that and be inspired by other people that they see on social media and i think that that's one of the huge things i don't use this word lightly but it's inspiring like you go on there and you see people putting their heart into working their you know working as hard as they can at, at their level of skill and then they're putting it out there for right. the world to critique or love or whatever it is and i think that that's inspiring that people so many people are doing that and then you know to yeah. to bring that back to this kind of boom we're seeing is mm -hmm. that people want to buy from those types of people people right. want to buy from somebody that they know is working their ass yeah. off and that they feel like they have that connection with exactly absolutely. Yep. absolutely when it comes to something that they really know they're going to love and brings meaning to them i think that they they embrace you know their fellow makers, and that's what's so cool about it. Right. I gotta say, if this is gonna work, I just have to, you know, throw it all out there. And, you know, it's all just being yourself, but putting your whole self out there yeah. for everybody to see. Unfiltered. It, unfiltered, it's, uh, it's a wild ride. Uh -huh. you know, it's a little, you know, makes yeah. a man a little nervous. Yeah. So anyway, oh, but yeah, I'm, I'm there. <laughs> Yeah. If uh, anybody who's been following along knows that uh, I don't hold back much. <laughs> anyway. I mean, why would you? Yeah, why would I? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, when the COVID crisis hit, uh, we weren't sure where the business was going to go. And I wasn't sure we were going to be continuing to sell aprons. We wanted to help out in some way. And I was just thinking, how can I build a bubble around my parents, my elderly parents? Mm -hmm. And the idea, I kid you not, came to me in a dream of this, was to, I, because materials were so hard to get. Yeah, you couldn't find filter material, you couldn't yeah. find elastic or anything. And it came to me, I, again, I kid you not, in a dream that Festool <laughs> makes a really great HEPA vacuum system. Right. And their vacuum bags filter just a tremendous amount of particles. And I was thinking, I can't get any other material, so. <laughs> anyway, we have produced, I think, 25,000 face masks. Wow. In the last six months. And uh, yeah, every single one of them was cut out of this. And so I put together, because I don't run a big crew here, is I put together basically 12, 15 ladies from around the Tri-County yeah. area. And we had a circuit going where we would drop off materials and a design and they would produce the mask and we'd go pick them up, bring them back here, do quality control and ship them out. So I think we shipped 10, eight or 10,000 to CNN, 10,000 to Google. And this was, I got these orders. I remember I showed you that prototype earlier? Mm -hmm. I made the prototype, sent a picture to a friend, a, a lady who was making them at home by mm -hmm. the dozens. And she's like, I've got a, a brother-in-law who works for CNN and they need face masks desperately. Yeah. Um, she was like, they might need a thousand. And I, I said, all right, maybe we could do that. Next thing they order 8,000. And so we got to produce 8,000 face masks. Yeah. So we pivoted pretty quickly, but it felt good to actually do something. And then we ran a big giveaway, which we talked about, and yeah. uh, we raised a bunch of money and donated uh, another couple thousand of them, Very which cool. again, felt really good. 
So yeah, we've uh, amazing. We've been through a few of these. Yeah, for sure. I I've, so. been, I've been waiting for six months to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Like that yeah, yeah. bin has had these things in uh -huh. there. And I was like, at some point I got to get a decent right. shot of that. Right. But yeah. Um, but actually one other quick thing on this is we had them tested and because I didn't want to go into the full-time face mask business, right. we didn't really publicize this, but this filtration material and the design that we, we mm -hmm. came up with um, actually captured more particulate than an N95. So this awesome. filtration material was really fantastic. Wow, that's super cool. And uh, so I communicated with Festool at the, the highest levels and sent them the design and you know was more than happy to cooperate. So yeah. I was always hoping that they would actually go into manufacturing. Right, yeah. But yeah, felt good to, to do something. Awesome. Anything. Ready? Do you want to put an apron on? What do you think? What do you think? You think? Yeah, let's do it. So this is our walnut bison, and mm -hmm. this is all hand dyed. Uh, basically, it comes in a, a lighter shade of leather, and I will lay them all out and then hand dye the the broad panel until it gets to just the right shade mm -hmm. and patina. You know, kind of a. It, gives you the the starter patina right. if you will um so that and then all the pockets are, are hand dyed and i go a little jackson pollock on these you know so that it's each one is completely different yeah with that sort of um visual texture in there yeah exactly and my favorite ones are the ones that look like super abstract painting you know, yeah they just look so completely wild so this is i would say Gosh, this has kind of become our, our best-selling model, and um, we, for the longest time, it was the the tobacco, and you know, largely still is. But it kind of goes back to the earlier conversation about how business has been over the summer. People started buying more expensive aprons; like they did not slow down. They yeah. they have bought like the 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 high-end versions, and you know, we were talking about the the that industrial tumbler in my vintageizing. Yeah, process. And the brass parts yeah, right here, yeah. Exactly. And so I added that to the, the whole line. And it's such a simple thing, mm -hmm. but, and it's super understated. I mean, it, it blends in, but then once you get up close and you see kind of the tarnish on this, is you understand, you know, like why that brass. And, but I just love the look of it. I, I think it gives it such a nice finish, old school look. Uh, this right here is. The, we talked about Jory a few times. So this is the uh, Jory Brigham special. Mm -hmm. um, Jory is quite a character in his own right. And I guess this is two, three, maybe two years before I left Festool. Mm -hmm. And Jory and I were out in the Pacific. And so we're out there surfing and there are no waves. So we're just sitting on the boards talking, talking about, you know, mm -hmm. why do people do what they do? You yeah. Know, why was, you know, why had he gone into woodworking? Why, why was that his chosen profession? Uh, I'll never forget dawning on me, like, why in the hell am I doing this? Like, I'm living this great life. I, by any measure, practically anybody that you and I know in this industry, like, that is the dream job. Like, yeah. you could not, <laughs> I, I could not have asked for a better job. And it was at that moment that it was like, I don't want this dream job. Right. Like, this is not my dream. This mm. is not what I'm dying to do with the rest of my life. I need my own thing. And it was at that moment that I started plotting my escape from corporate. Mm -hmm. No question about it, that specific moment. Well, I, I feel so, like, you know, as good as that looks, like I, there's only one color that works for you and that's black. <laughs> like, there's no question <laughs> in my mind. Like the this Ashley Harwood true. special is gonna be black. This is true. And I, I've been thinking about it forever and I, I wish that I would have thought far enough in advance to, to have one just like super ready when you got here. But the, I swear, you know, black is definitely. Or maybe just one of each. What's that? <laughs> maybe maybe one just of one of each, like. And this one, I, mm -hmm. I figure. Let's see here. Yeah, when you came to the shop last year and we were looking at them and of course you, 
had on the, the black one in it. Yeah, it looked yeah. so perfect. Is this is this how it's supposed to fit? Uh, typically, yeah. I would say, you know, I would normally probably bring this up a little bit, but it's yeah. adjustable on the back yeah. so that it sits about right there. And then See, I, I think would, for me a little shorter too. And that makes sense. And I would, but I grabbed the longer one because you're a little taller. Mm -hmm. and was thinking, you know, maybe you would want to keep the shavings off down there, but really, you're just thinking about yeah. up here. Oh, it's very sizing, huh? Yeah, so that might yeah. be... I mean, I think that would be plenty long enough for me. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. that's good to know because in my mind, I was going to make yours long, but no, I, that's easy to do. Calavera is based on those skulls you see largely around Halloween. Uh, they're actually connected to El Dia de los Muertos. And that holiday is about those who came before you, you know, your, your family, your forebears. I just thought it would be really cool to, to start something that had some significance looking back on the, the past, not just the future. At this moment in time, I am doing what my life needs to be doing, beyond any question. Sweating, slaving away, making this product because I love doing this. And at this moment in my life, this is exactly where I want to be, doing exactly what I want to be doing. I taught myself leatherworking and sewing just so I could start this business and just so I can make these products. You have to just jump in. You can't half-ass it. You can't do it in half measure. You have to go all in. You have to say, this is my business, this is my life, this is what I'm going to do. There's no looking back. You just jump straight off that cliff, you get into it, and you just go, and you pour your heart into it. Thank you so much for having us, Michael, and thank you for sharing your story with us. Yeah, yeah, of course. Your many I, stories. I yeah, sorry, <laughs> I, I get me on a roll, and uh, it's, I, I was kind of alluding to it earlier, like, this is my zen place. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is, this feels so right, and it, it, so it's, it's fun. It's mm -hmm. fun to, to share. Yeah. So, glad you guys made it out. Me too. Um, and thank you for watching everybody. If you would like to learn more about Michael and about Calavera Tool, we're going to have links down below. You can check out these fabulous aprons. I'm going to be here trying them on for the rest of the day. I hope that's all right. No problem. Okay. Anytime, <laughs> as long as you want. Till next time, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you saw, I do hope that you'll hit subscribe. And don't forget the little notifications bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And please let us know what you think in the comments. We love to hear back from you guys. I would like to take a moment to give a big shout out to all of my Patreon members. 
Thank you so much. We really appreciate all of your support and especially in times like these, it really helps us to continue to bring you high quality photos and video to all of the social media channels. I would especially like to give a big shout out to my top tier patrons, Andrew Nidal, Chris Cairns, Dr. David Matheson, Erica Vane, Jim Tate, Chris Jones, Leonard Kroll, Mark Glonek, Robert Hunt, and Steve Snyder. Thank you so much. If you would like a behind the scenes look at what's going on here in Charleston, or if you would like to have a heads up before everybody else when I schedule my new classes, and yes, I will be scheduling new classes for early 2021, then head on over to the Patreon page and check it out. Well, thanks again, guys. Until next time. Yes, brought to you by Red Bull and Adderall. <laughs>